So if you've got a veg tan leather project that you've made and you need to finish it to prevent it from being worn and cracked and damaged by disgusting wet water, sealing it is generally a straightforward process. Look, I'll cut away and show you how to do it normally. Literally just apply your preference of sealing compound. Needs foot oil, leather conditioner or top coat, these all have their slight differences and I'm sure you'll be able to develop a preference on your own. I'm a big Needs foot oil boy myself. Okay, so now that I've cleared the air there, the reason I'm making this video is because we've spent so many little lessons together making this costrel, it would be a shame to not show you how to properly finish it and make it waterproof with beeswax. You guys have been making this along with me, right? Let's get into it. We're going into the kitchen for this episode and I'm joined by my lovely assistant, me. So preheat your ovens to literally as low as you can get it to go. We're gonna put the costrel onto a baking tray that's lined with aluminium foil. We don't wanna leave the costrel in here for a minute too long, just enough to get it to the stage of being warm to the touch. Why is that you ask? Excellent question, thanks for the prompt. If the costrel is too cold, when we introduce the molten wax, the wax will chill and immediately solidify. If you're a very particular kind of adventurous, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And this brings me neatly to the next thing we need molten wax. I got this big old chunk of beeswax that I'm gonna awkwardly break a lump off of and put it into a double boiler. This is just a metal bowl in a metal pot that's full of boiling water. This limits the direct heat into the bowl and prevents the wax from burning, which we don't want. Just don't let the bigger pot run out of water or you'll be in for a whole world of interesting smells and awkward cleaning up. Our aim here is not to coat the costrel with wax, but rather to impregnate it with wax. And yes, I probably could have picked a better word to use with such emphasis. We want the wax to completely saturate that fibrous material of the leather, and this is what makes it waterproof and sturdy. Once the wax is molten and the costrel is warm, we're going to liberally apply the wax to the outside of the costrel with this foam brush and also pour it directly into the inside, where I'll slosh the wax around like I'm getting ready to sip some brandy. And I'm paying particular attention to our seams running down the side because the leather is pinched here and there's more volume and it's harder for the wax to penetrate. But it's also exactly where this thing will leak from, so we need to make sure the wax is right up in there. Pour the excess back into the bowl, we're not done with this yet. The wax we paint on the outside will still get gluggy and gross like this because it's the hardening as we apply it. That's fine, we'll pop it into the oven again for a couple of minutes after application, paying attention to when the outside gets glossy. I'm impatient though, so I'm using my heat gun to speed things up. Once it is glossy, use a paper towel to wipe off the excess, but you should see most of it disappear into the leather. It's extremely unlikely that your costra will be waterproof after the first application. So once it's dried and cooled down in the air, pour some water in and see how well you've done. I give myself a grade of B plus for this one. You can see the water darkening the inside in a few spots here. So then just rinse and repeat. Always repeat. After a couple applications, you should have something like this that is hard, rigid, dark, and completely waterproof. The edges can get messed up a bit in this process, but as I mentioned before, I'm doing things a little out of order for this tutorial series. But hey, worst case scenario, just burnish it again. The costrel is already chock full of wax for you, so it's a snap. And that's it. We did it. We made a thing. Be careful with what you use for a stopper, but I've just whittled a twig and treated it with beeswax as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this series and I really hope that you learned something. It's always rewarding to learn how to work with a new material and I hope that now we can share in my favourite hobby, collecting hobbies. If you guys made anything out of leather following along with this series, especially a costra, I'd love to see what you guys have been up to. You guys take it easy and I'll catch you later. Mmm, leathery. Oh, um, you know, like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram and whatnot as well. Do all that stuff too.